I'll be demonstrating for you everything you need to know about drawing camera lines. I'll be using the sample script that is included with Scripty called Depth Perception. I've already prepared a shot, Slate 1, using Scenes 1 and 9. It's a two camera shot, cameras A and B. Each time you add a camera to a shot, Scripty provides a tube that is used to draw the line. So to begin drawing the line for a camera, just click in the tube where you want the line to start. I'll click at the beginning of the scene for camera A. Scripty pops up the camera line window with the available line types. The part of the script next to which you clicked on the tube is shown at the top of the window so you can make sure that you're starting the line or placing the indicator in the correct location. The three main types of lines are on camera, off camera, and dirty meaning that the character is on screen but we don't see their mouth. To get started I'm going to click on camera. Scripty draws a straight line through both scenes. Simple. I'll do the same for camera B, which is a close-up. But since this is a close-up of Sandy, we're not going to see Brianna. I'll click next to Brianna's first block of dialog. Notice the dialog shows up in the box at the top of the window. Next I'll click off camera. Since I click next to dialog, Scripty asks if I want to use the same line type for the rest of Brianna's dialog. I'll click yes and Scripty draws the lines for me. Now let's say that the B camera will stop when Sandy steps to the buffet table at the beginning of scene 9. I'll click the tube, which is now a line. Then I'll click End Line. And the line ends and the tube returns. Let's look at some of the other options. I'll click on camera A next to Brianna's first dialog. Some script supervisors like to indicate the eye line for a character. You can indicate left or right. I'll click left. Once again, Scripty asks if I want to use the same line type for the rest of this character's dialogue. I'll click no. And the eye line indicator is added. Let's say the camera moved and her eye line changes. I'll click camera A at the next block of dialogue. I'll click eye line right and this time I click yes to repeat for the rest of her dialogue. As you go along modifying the line, if you make a mistake, click Apple Z to remove the last camera line part or parts. Let's say that the camera roll ran out during the shot for camera A, so take one end it sooner than expected. We can indicate that on the line. I'll click on the line where the camera roll ran out. and I'll click Take Cuts here. A double line with the take number is added to the line. We can do the same if the take actually started late. If the cameraman dozed off or something like that, I'll click on the line for camera B, and I'll click Take Starts here. A single line is added with the take number next to it. Let's say that something happened during a take and a section of the shot is completely unusable. You can indicate that on the line. I'll click on the line for A, and select Don't Use Starting Here. A red X is drawn to the end of the scenes since I haven't yet indicated where the bad spot ended. <clears throat> I'll do that now. I'll click on the line, and select Don't Use Ending Here. Again, the take number is also shown. There's one more indicator that you have available, and that is the cross-axis indicator. I'll click on the B line. In this case, I want to indicate the exact spot in the script where the camera crossed axis. If I click at the point in the script at the top of the window, a red asterisk appears. When I click the cross-axis button, a line will be drawn to that spot in the script. I could change my mind and clear that point by clicking the clear point button, but I'll click, I clicked cross axis so you can see how it works. Notice the red X that has been added to the line with a line drawn to the specific location in the script. You can also use the specific location indicator for the other line types if you need to be that specific as to when something happened. Very quickly I'm going to roll a couple of takes. Now we're in take two. 
I'm going to indicate that take two started late on camera A. As you can see, the take number is correctly indicated. Now, if you didn't have time to line the shot during the shot or need to make a change for a specific take, you can change the current take by clicking the next or previous buttons above the takes list. I'm going to click the previous button to change the current take to take one. Notice it shows that we're on take one. I'll make a change that applies to take one now. I'll indicate that take one ended early for camera B. And the lines are identified for take one. To show you where the lines go when you go to the next slate, I'll click the new slate button. You can see that the camera lines have moved onto the script based on the shot look type selected for each one. Camera A was a wide shot, so it's to the left and camera B was a close-up, so it's to the right. Also notice the color coding. If you haven't already, be sure to watch the demonstration on configuring Scripty. You'll learn how to set the colors for each camera type. Now, as you can see, I have the shot look type also shown with the slate above the camera line. If you want to turn that off, you can check your preferences under the Scripty menu and uncheck Show Shot Look on Camera Lines. Now, I'll scroll the shot window so that it refreshes, and you can see that the shot look description has gone away. Go ahead and play around with the camera lines. You can always clear the line and start over. And that concludes this demonstration on drawing camera lines.